Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridging with a Cisco access point. So guys, every once in a while I get into the situation where I've got a device, um, most of the time it's a, a Cisco video endpoint like an MX200 or MX300 that has wheels on it and they want to make it mobile or they want to put it in a place where there's no Ethernet jacks available. So they try to find an, in, a, uh, an enterprise type of solution for taking Wi-Fi and bringing it over to the Ethernet port of this device here. So I've got a really simple solution for doing this. Um, you can basically take any Cisco access point that you guys might have laying around. This could be new, this could be old, could be lightweight, could be autonomous. Um, if it's lightweight, turn it into autonomous. I made another video where it's really simple and easy to do. Just uh, go watch that video and do it. And you need a power injector because you need to get power to this thing somehow because you don't have power of Ethernet available, obviously, because you're trying to get Wi-Fi over to Ethernet. So once you have those two things, um, I made a quick little diagram here to show you how to put this together. Basically what you do is on the power injector where it says to switch, that's going to get plugged into the device you're trying to get uh, Ethernet to. And then the access point is going to just plug into the normal spot on the power injector there where it says AP. Plug the power injector in and you're ready to get going here. To get the AP up and running, first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to terminal into this um, just to set up the BVI interface and then we can configure the rest of it over um, Safari or Firefox if you want. So in order to get into the access point, just go into enable mode. The default password is Cisco with a capital C and then we're going to go into config T and we're going to configure our interface BVI1 and give it an IP address. So I'm just going to do 10.0.0.100 and sub that mask and we should be good to go. Now I'm just going to write it real quick there and now we can configure the rest through a web browser. So just to show you guys here, I'm going to use my, my laptop as an example to show you guys I have no internet connectivity whatsoever right now. I'll go to Google, I'll try to go to Yahoo, and I can show you I've disabled Wi-Fi. And the only thing I have plugged in here is my Thunderbolt Ethernet connection. And I need to switch that over to manual, put that on the same network that the AP is on. And we'll just do that real quick. And now I should be able to communicate between the access point and my computer. So let's go to the IP address of the AP. Cisco, Cisco, again, capital C's on everything. And then we log into the GUI. Now, guys, please be patient with this GUI. It's not the most friendly GUI to work with. A lot of times it sits and loads and everything, and it, and it could take a minute. Um, I've had really good success with Firefox and Internet Explorer. Um, Internet Explorer probably being the best, but, but Firefox works just fine. So first thing you're going to do when you get in here is we're going to go over to Security, and we need to set up our encryption manager here. And this is basically because we need to set up how this Wi-Fi access point is going to connect to your Wi-Fi. So if you're using WPA2 or WPA, um, AES, you know, you need to set that stuff so the AP knows exactly how to join your Wi-Fi. So the first thing you're going to do is hit the cipher here. And you're going to switch this to AES for WPA2. And then you can apply this to all the radios or you know, radio zero if you wanted to. We're just going to go ahead and make it easy. Apply to all the radios and you're set in here. Then we're going to go over to SSID manager. Click that. And we're going to create this SSID. But really what this is, is your SSID that you want this access point to associate with. So type in the, the, your guys' corporate SSID here. Mine is called the Boken. And then we're going to go down to key management. And this is where you're going to say mandatory, enable WPA. And this is where you're going to do your, your WPA2 setting. So it knows to use WPA2. And for its cipher, use AES because we set that in the encryption manager there. On this page, I believe that's all we need to set. We do need to say what radio we want this SSID to be to be associated with, and that's going to be 
the 2.4 gigahertz one. You can use 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. Just depends on whatever you want to do. Okay, then the only other thing to add in here would be the pre-shared key that you need to associate to your Wi-Fi. So I'm going to enter mine in right now. And we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to apply this. Okay. Now we just need to kind of enable the radio and tell this thing to, to go into universal work group bridge mode. So click on home up here at the top, click on that 2.4 gigahertz radio because that's where we associated this. Click over to your settings tab. And this is one of those pages that does take a minute or so to build out. So you'll know that this is actually working and ready to be configured on once some of these radio buttons get uh, the little dots filled in. You also see in the bottom left here, it was showing waiting. Once that's done, now we're ready to go. Enable the radio, and we want to put it into universal workgroup bridge mode. Um, there is another option called workgroup bridge. This is kind of Cisco proprietary. Um, I've always just used universal workgroup bridge. This works great on Cisco Wi-Fi if you guys have Cisco Wi-Fi, or this will work, should work with any third-party uh, Wi-Fi on the market as well. And then basically what we need to do is we need to enter in the MAC address of the device that's going to sit behind the access point. Because what the access point is going to do is your Wi-Fi is going to think that it's the, uh, the device that you're trying to get wired up that's associated to the, to the APs. So make sure you put in that MAC address. The device that you're trying to get Wi-Fi to is the MAC address. So for me, that's actually going to be my laptop, and I'm going to put my MAC address in here for that. Pay attention to this format. The way that it wants it is with the three dots um, partitioned out there. So make sure that that's set up like that. And once it's enabled and it's in universal work with bridge mode, you should be good to go on this page. Just click apply. Give you a couple okay boxes there. And now we can see the AP shutting down, coming back up. And one other cool thing that you can tell how this thing is actually associating with your Wi-Fi now is there should be a little blue light. Green means it's not associated, not doing anything. That's kind of hard for, for you to see, but there's a blue light that's on there. And that means that it's working. And you can also see in here, too, that we're associated to, and it's got um, the MAC address and everything in here. So, you know... If I go to Yahoo or Google, this isn't going to work yet because I need to switch my network card over to DHCP. But I can go in here, DHCP, and this is going to grab DHCP from, from my network. Came back up. Now if I go to Yahoo, it should be good and we're working. So this is probably the easiest way that I found um, doing a a client to Ethernet or a Wi-Fi client to Ethernet type of bridge solution here. Curious in your guys' thoughts. Hopefully if you guys found this useful. Please subscribe to my station and like this if you like it. Thanks a lot.